Ben, where are you? Well, I'm at the green. Where do you want me to go now? Right, from there you've got to turn right. Right? Which right? Yeah, definitely right. You've got to go sharp right all the way along to the end and the cinema's on your left. OK. OK? See you in a few minutes. All right, then. Bye. When you're in a town, directions and landmarks can make it very easy to find your way around. But imagine how difficult it can be to navigate a ship out in the ocean or fly a plane up in the sky. You can't exactly turn left at the nearest seagull and do it right by the third cloud. This programme is about finding your way using bearings and the crucial bit of kit you need is a compass. Right. My goodness, where have you been? You could have done with one of these to find the cinema a bit quicker. Yeah, yeah, I've bought the popcorn. For ages. I've bought the popcorn. For ages. No, Did you get the tickets? A compass needle always points in the direction of north. The other main compass points are east, south and west. Exactly in between north and east is northeast. Then you've got southeast, southwest and northwest. Each describes a different direction or bearing. So if I walk along this line here, I'm taking a bearing due east. But what if I walk off in that direction. How do I describe my bearing then? Southeast-ish? It's not very accurate, is it? So, to make it more precise, a full turn measured clockwise from north all the way round to north again is divided into 360 degrees. North is 000 degrees. East is 090 degrees. South is 180 degrees and west is 270 degrees. A bearing is simply a direction given in degrees. It's an angle always measured clockwise from north, and it always has three figures. So the direction I'm walking in now has a bearing of 120 degrees. Here on the Dublin Swift, which is one of the new breed of super fast ferries. It's twice as fast as your average ferry, and we're travelling across the Irish Sea from Holyhead in the north of Wales to Dublin in Ireland. Now, for us to travel across this stretch of water, which is very busy safely, it's really quite difficult. It is really important that we go in the right direction, which might seem like a really stupid thing to say, but when there's no landmarks to speak of, it can be pretty tricky. So, therefore, it's very important for us to be on the correct bearing. Not surprisingly, up here on the bridge, there is fortunately a compass. Now, this is Alan Salisbury, who is the captain of this fantastic ship. Alan, tell me just how important are bearings when you're navigating at sea? Absolutely essential. Our bearing or course of moment is a 269. That gives us a pinpoint direction of where to head. So it's, it's, it's imperative that we have a bearing of the destination where we're going to, or other vessels for that matter. And do you often have to change course, change your bearing? Uh, continually. Continually we have to update our course depending on the effect of the weather's having on our track as well. We could be being pushed to the north, to the south, depending on the current. We also have things like traffic with other vessels ahead of us now. We have to give way to certain vessels depending on the situation. So we have an ideal bearing that we follow, but that's continually updated to suit the situation. And uh, would you ever have to go and help a ship that might be in distress? Or? Uh, absolutely. If we didn't, I'd be in a lot of trouble straight <laughs> away. But uh, it's a legal requirement. We must assist all vessels in distress. So if we receive a distress call, it will come here somewhere. It will indicate a position, we take a bearing of that position, that gives us a course to steer, and off we go. Jonathan Swift, good morning again, sir. You have 12 knots of speed, question 14, direction 038. Now, it's only when you see the professionals at work that you realise just how important bearings are when you're navigating at sea. But they're going to be important to you as well because your maths exam will have a question which will ask you to measure and draw the bearing between two points. So this is the maths for real guide to exam success. Remember that a bearing is simply the direction travelled between two points 
given as an angle measured in degrees. Now, our start point is Holyhead, our end point is Dublin. And we're going to ignore the fact that usual shipping restrictions mean that we have to stay in certain shipping lanes. And we're going to look for a direct bearing from Holyhead to Dublin on here. Now, there's three really, really simple steps to follow. Step one. Draw a line from your start point to your end point. So that's Hollyhead to Dublin. Like that. Lovely. Now, step two. Put your pen at where you're starting from. From is the most important word here. So we're starting from Hollyhead. So we need to put our pen here and draw a line directly northwards. Now, every map should show you which direction is north. Now, this little diagram here is telling me that north is going directly up these grid lines. So if I follow that as a reference point, put my ruler here on Hollyhead, and draw a line up this grid line, that is north there. Okay, that's the first two steps. Step three, you need to measure the angle from the north line clockwise round to the line that joins the two points. That's this angle clockwise there. That is the angle we need to measure in order to get our bearing. Now, to measure this, we need to use a protractor. Now, protractors look a bit like this and they come in all different shapes and sizes. I'm using a 360 degree protractor uh, because I can, let's say. Now, what you have to do is place the centre of the protractor on your start point, where you're starting from, which is Hollyhead. Get the zero degree line, go straight up your north line, look at the outside reading, measure clockwise round to the line that joins the two points, and this tells me that the bearing, Hollyhead to Dublin, is 275 degrees. There you go. It's as straightforward as David Beckham's haircut. Just hope we may do so outside on deck five. Well, we've arrived in Dublin and the sun's shining, it's gorgeous. Now, remember, the bearing that I measured from Hollyhead to Dublin was 275 degrees. The question is, what is the bearing to Hollyhead from Dublin? See if you can work it out while I enjoy the sun. OK, this is the bit where Katie and I both tackle a typical maths question, but only one of us does it correctly. The other makes a deliberate mistake, which you have to spot. You decide, do you tick it or trash it? This week's problem is about someone going for a walk in the desert. They start at point A, a palm tree, and travel to point B, an oasis. To get to the port at point C, they have to change direction. Measure the bearing that they must walk on to get to C from B. A walker starts at point A, a palm tree, and travels to point B, an oasis. To get to the port at point C, she has to change direction. Measure the bearing she must walk on to get to C from B. We're asked to find the bearing of C from B. So I drew the line from B to C, and then I drew a north line at B. And I measured this angle here which is 280 degrees. So the bearing to C from B is 280 degrees. I did the same. I drew the line from B to C and drew a north line at B. But I measured this angle, which is 80 degrees. So the bearing to C from B is 080 degrees. Which was right and which was wrong? Did you spot the deliberate mistake? Was Ben right with 280 degrees? Or was Katie right with 080 degrees? OK, I'll come clean. I was wrong. Instead of finding the clockwise angle, I found the anti-clockwise angle. It's a common mistake to make, so watch out when it comes to the exams. You always find the clockwise angle from the north line. Six zero out of nine zero straight for the centre fix, runway three yes. two. That's correct. Self positioning is approved. On the iOS runway three two, it's a radar monitor. Approach. Another place where bearings come in handy is in the air, especially at night or when it's cloudy or foggy. It's really vital that airline pilots have a good understanding of bearings because otherwise they could end up in Blackpool when they're meant to be heading for the Bahamas. Here in Leeds Bradford's Air Traffic Control Centre, they deal with dozens of aircraft a day. For everyone's safety, they need to track the position of each plane. 
all air traffic lands and takes off on a specific bearing. This is a flight simulator and it's here that pilots are put through their paces, not only when they're learning how to fly an aircraft, but also just as importantly to test their knowledge of bearings. Today it's me that's in the hot seat and I'll be on a pretend flight from Manchester to Leeds Bradford Airport. Okay, so here's Manchester and here's Leeds Bradford. So Malcolm, what's the route today? We're going to take off from Manchester on a bearing of 063 degrees, 37 miles and we'll turn left onto a bearing of 323 degrees to line up with the runway at Leeds ready for landing. Yeah, sounds easy enough and um, this is how you draw that route. I'm starting from Manchester so the first step is to draw a north line at Manchester. A bearing of 063 degrees means I need to measure an angle of 63 degrees clockwise from north, draw a line from Manchester at this angle and that's the direction I need to travel in for 37 miles. On this scale map that brings me to this point here. To get to Leeds, I have to change direction, so I need to draw in a new north line, and the new angle I need to measure clockwise is 323 degrees. Draw a line in this direction, and in 18 miles, I reach the runway at Leeds Bradford Airport. Now all I've got to do is master the controls. Fasten your seatbelts. This is going to be one exciting ride. So if I just power up now. Power forward. Here we go. How fast are we going now? Uh, Getting my head around just one bearing change was hard enough, but on a real flight, a pilot might have to change direction up to 40 times. I need to turn left on a bearing of 323, line up with the runway at least. So that's our compass reading there, isn't it? Yes. And you can, we can see how, that, how we're changing there. So now it's coming up to 323 at the top. And we're ready for doing a landing head here at least. So you have control for the landing. <laughs> If you look carefully as we come into land, you'll see that there's a 32 painted on the end of the runway. Those two figures are the first two figures of our three-figure bearing, which is 323. And it's there so that we know that we're coming in on the correct runway. I managed to change my bearing okay, but I think my landing skills need a bit more practice. Hey! <laughs> Where are we? Are we meant to be swerving all over the runway like that? So, to recap, Katie left Manchester Airport on a bearing of 063 degrees and travelled 37 miles. She then changed to a bearing of 323 degrees in order to line up with the runway at Leeds Bradford. But our final question to you is, what bearings would Katie need to follow to retrace her tracks on the return journey? Oh, that was great, except for the fact that you ate all the popcorn. No, no, no. You always no. do that, you always do that. Let's, let's go, go home. Let's right, go it's home. this way. No, it's not. It's, it's definitely this way. this way. The green's it's, that way, I can see it. Go down not. there and just do ben. it. Up. Right. Ben, it's this way. Katie, why is it always get your own way? <laughs>